Okay, so what I did here was I have a model, a uh, scaled model, and I'm off maybe three eighths of an inch on its locations. But the uh, this is scaled, and what I did was I left off the number one um, upright, if you will. And down, down here is number 12. This is made of steel. I welded it together so it, it stays um, locked in. Uh, I have this loose, number 12 is loose. On the bottom, I have a, I was attempting to recapture the load from here to stop the flexion to see if you could do it with some type of bracing. This is cut, this is not together. It's fully cut. So this is that. Now, a bar goes through here, anchors into the deck, and one anchors into the number 12. As it does, as they loosen this up, the number 12 is no longer anchored at here, but the bottom of 11, 11, 11, it's go, they both go through number 11, two bars. 11 is still anchored into the diaphragm, the lower section here. Now, Denny Pate and I'm stated that this is a total compressor system, that it's not. So, Embry, your, your question is what kind of structure it is. Well, it's all compressive in theory. And it, it makes sense to me that it, how it would work. But then when he had his engineer do the report on it, you know, to do the counter of NIST, they stated that uh, they talked about the truss system, how it behaved. Okay, so that's it did behave as a truss the moment deflection happened because it's no longer a compressive system at that point. It's got some tension on it, right? It, if it deflects down here, let's say in the middle, you've got tension and compression, if you will. But we have deflection over here. When, when, when we go over the video, let's see if I can find it now. Hold on. So here's our video. And I want you to observe at this end of the structure, which is gonna be down there, because as he drives closer, it moves over, of course. But this is the structure now in reverse. And so this is our, okay, let's do this one. So this is our number 11 I just did. This is number 10 and this is 12. So here's 12. They state that this, uh, this loaded system, this loaded, the loaded system pushed number 11, pushed number 12 off. And that's where the failure happened. But clearly, you'll see in the video, deflection happens right about here. So that means the deck is failing, not number 11. 11 can't elongate itself. It can't magically get longer on its own. All right, you need deflection in the deck for 11 to push number, uh, number 11 right here to push number 12. You need deflection in the deck for it to push on number 12. So the deflection happens first. But, but we have the reports from the post-tensioning people saying that when they detension the structure, it cracked like hell right down here. And I did videos on that and images, etc. And I'd show the, how the, deck, the, the canopy rotated. The canopy is that top part, like that. It rotated, and that gives us our fractures in the back diaphragm that have these fractures like this. And the elevated deck um, back here in the diaphragm, right about here, top deck. We see elevation. I don't want to confuse you with that. You can ask me for links. I'll send you down that rabbit hole. So let's clear this up. Let's play the video. And right about there, I want you to see that this is number 11. And some people say they've seen some, something go off there. And they're trying to say it's slide friction that happened. It slid, number 11 slid off. Now, you have to be a, in Florida for this type of um, um, uh, advance system you have to be advanced an advanced engineer qualified by florida to to evaluate this type of structure uh ntsb's engineers times two that were ahead of this neither one of them held that advanced um degree if you will or certification and yet they do just they did the evaluation of this structure and they stated that number 11 right here pushed off number 12 and then that caused a failure well they, they don't understand the, how this structure behaves this was a flat plate this was post tension this is how this simple as this this is post tension in here and it's so taut that no deflection will take place just count it as zero deflection all right it's a compressive system the moment you have deflection you no longer have a compressive system this is by the uh, fig engineering stating it's a compressive system 
And then he retracted it a little bit because when he had their expert talk about it, he talked about it as a trust system. But I'll stick with what the original intent is. Under zero, zero deflection, this system works. It's really an awesome system. It works. Their engineer, I believe she, and I did state she clearly, was the post-tensioning that Denny Pate outsourced to in his own group to handle the post-tensioning. I believe that she undervalued, overvalued her post-tensioning in this structure, clearly because of the deflection. And then when Denny Pate got his hands fully on it, he thought that he could just put it back to the way it was on Saturday and everything would be copacetic. All right, so you can see this is not going to really act like a truss system with this crazy system, right? Unless, you, if you lock in all these areas, if you lock them in, which I'll show in my model in a second, if you lock them all in and just make it so neither one can move, nothing can move, just count, the, count this as a zero force, right? You don't need it, and I'll show you because I'll stand on my own model, and you'll see that it's not needed to keep this, this, take this deck flat, and I have the other one on the end off. So, but the, you'll need these for this to work. All right. If you could lock them in and make them so they don't deflect. So any, any, when it starts to deflect, you resolve it with more post-tensioning, if you will. More post-tensioning down here, which at the back of their diaphragm, they did not have all of them uniformly, uniformly, I think it was six and six. That's the center. This had like, say, let's say this had a value of 10, uh, nine. This one had a value of 10. And then 10, and then 10, and 10. Well, this 9 is also on this side, the opposing that number 12 on the back of the diaphragm, looking at the back of the structure. This was, uh, had, took more force and failed first, I believe, over a 10. This is simply dealing with uh, um, fasteners, if you will, that the clamp force wasn't the same in this one as it was in the rest. And yet, this is the one that's loaded significantly more because down the center of the structure, center of the structure is this top canopy and all of these supports, these uprights. These uprights, if we look at the bridge, if we can look at a bird's eye view, it will go right down the middle. And at the bird's eye view, and if you look on the left side here, so left, 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 I think it's six over there and six over here. And this is the post-tensioning. So the post-tensioning goes through. And you can see there's none in the middle. It cannot be in the middle because that's where the diaphragm, I mean, the, uh, each one of these uh, intersections of the truss system was as they go through the deck. Um, and I call it truss system now. So they go through the deck, they couldn't get post-tensioning through it also, or they decided they didn't need to. It would have to bridge, tie into the outer two these two over here, this one and this one, by reinforcement to get that load to transfer to the next bars over. Well, they did use transfer um, 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 post-tensioning along the side of the structure and steel. So, theoretically, it passes over into a compressive. If, it, if you can get these not to deflect, they were all equally post-tensioned. If they would not deflect, then this won't punch through. The center will not punch through. All right, I didn't see anywhere where the center punched through. So it appears that this was like, like he nailed that one in my fast opinion on this one and recalling what I recall. Now we look at the structure and I want you to watch where it bends first, right there. You can find the videos and go through it yourself. That's one of the videos that a lot of people have it. I even have it up there slow motioned. But this is where you're gonna see deflection first in the deck. It's going to deflect and so it would be right there and then change in direction so let's let it play I'm gonna try to catch it right there okay so you see right there is where the fracture took place and this is rigid still straight and then this goes up there's your, my exaggeration with the, with the angle, but that is the break there. The deck broke right there. That's where your deflection was, result, was resolved. Remember, why would it resolve there? Because the rest of this deck, they were post-tensioning up here, these guys up here. They were trying to recapture this load into here. But once they, re, once they killed this, once this one failed under, under compression, 
because of all the it's, it's structurally unsound even though uh, F, even though um, the engineer for FIG and also NTSB they give it no deduction and yet it's all cracked up it's split it's junk I'll show you a quick little hit of that and yet they do no deduction for that in fact they started post tensioning this thing now they're an expert VSL or whatever they call themselves they're they're an expert in post tensioning and repairs and yet they post tension this crippled member this number 11 trying to put back i don't recall 560 kips times two into it something like that you look at it again here and you'll see i'm going to play now oh I'm trying to see if i can get it to play uh let me see how i did that trick on that Nope, watch it right there at the location. All right, so you see the hinge point, the, rot the point it rotates at right here. It's all straight. That's it. That's your brake right there. If they're saying the top slid off, well, by chance there's there. It's also there. That's also straight. These are parallel from each other. So how did it get, how is it able to slide that off? Not until you reconfigure it like this, this being locked there, and now you can get this slide action because now it's shorter. Let's go to the, uh, let me go to this, the video back in the outside. Hold on. Am I, uh, let me switch over to the other view, another another angle. Oh, I guess I should watch it, watch it, let you guys watch it fail. Okay. So. And we'll let it play. And approaching. Look to your left, right by the right of the crane. And you'll see the fracture happen. Oh, there it is. So what happened was it just simply transferred. Once they number once number eleven failed through their post tensioning, all the loads went down. All the loads then went down. Number once you eliminate this one, as the system works, right? All the loads, it could no longer trans say rigid here. This is no longer rigid. This was canceled out. It, it now, it's now here. This is canceled. This is cancel culture, right? It's gone. It's made ineffective with the post tensioning crew up here. They, they, they kill it, in my opinion, with that post tensioning. It fails. Upon failing, now how do you get the load? The load made it over to here. This nodal area is now failed. How does the load go from here over to the support, the, the pier? The pier? Well, through the bottom of the deck. And all of this, including some significant part of this, it has to go over, transfer through the bottom of the deck over to this diaphragm, over to the uh, pure cap. Actually, it goes through diaphragm. Diaphragm looks like this. All right, diaphragm. So it's got to, and this would be that spot where it fractured. It's got to make it over and then down. They never secured this, anchored it down. So that it, uh, it lose the value of that, it allows it to rotate like that because it's not anchored down. They never put the post tensioning bar in there to secure the diaphragm down. That would have helped in the rigidity also, but this allows at this deflection here as this goes down, this rotation happens like that, allows this to go rotate up. It could have been countered somewhat with the post tensioning bars. All right. So let's go like this. I'll let you fail again. There we go again. You see where it start where it's right here. And again, this is a diaphragm action like that. It's a cutaway, if you will. Now, what did I say about that video? Hold on. So here we have the the number 11. This is the one they were post tensioning, adding all the kips to, and you can see full fractures. This is nothing. This is all. It's, it's nothing as compared to the other side. The other side is, is, is terrible. It's fully split. It's rotated. It's rotated. It's out of plane. Um, forward and backwards indicates that the bridge rotated. This is before collapse because this guy's up here taking photographs and measurements. This is an engineer. I'll have uh, more to... Okay, look, guys. I want to pick it up from here, and I'll do about three minutes of this, and I'll, I'll do a narration, too. I've watched this numerous times, but wait. Uh, other questions on uh, oversight here uh, shortly, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you, Vice Chairman. Remember, Hamadi. Uh, first, Ms. Lamb, I... So, so, for clarity, remember, I don't throw out the baby with the bathwater. I really beat her up on um, on the uh, her being new for um, uh, Kobe Bryant's thing. But now, and when she goes in the field. 
But with this, she asked a couple of nails a couple of questions. So never throw out the baby with the bathwater. Not unless that's your intent. Hold on. I do want to congratulate you on your recent award for the 29 best paper at the Journal of Failure Analysis and Prevention at the Material Science and Technology 2019 conference in Portland. Time, that was on the Centerville pipeline accident. So, and I believe you got that with Dr. Mueller. So, okay. congratulations. Thank you, Member Hamidi. Um, so, I want to go into the last. 48 hours Wait before the collapse. Wait That's where I want to start. First I want you to understand at 48 hours what she's saying. This, What she's going to state is that how they knew two days before that what they were going to do because he had scheduled um, the, the post-tensioning company to arrive there to get ready to do work. So it was already a foredrawn conclusion that it was going to happen. He already scheduled them. 48 hours. Even though that meeting was there, it was a faux meeting. Uh, it meant nothing because Fig made up his mind that that shit's going back to where it was Saturday. And I don't know how he made that decision so quickly because um, as far as I know, he wasn't there. He never inspected the structure. But he just, with the data he had, he was like, yeah, we're just going to post-tension it back to the way it was on Saturday. First, before I do that, FHWA performed an assessment of the bridge That's design, Florida. Florida and in their assessment, they found that the structure provided warning before failure through development of significant and visible distress, Crack, and yeah. the structural cracking is strong evidence that the structure was progressing toward failure. So, Structural crackings. They didn't say, um, you know, just minor crackings or whatever. So with that wording that she's stating, the structural crackings... They don't talk about the structural crackings in the part of the report when they do their analysis saying they still want to stick with number 11 pushed off number 12. Number 11 is the one that's structurally crippled along with the diaphragm back there. First, let me start with, and I know you stated this in your uh, PowerPoint presentation, but what, what is the Florida specification or limit for cracking before it becomes structural a structural problem? Mr. Walsh. In the uh, F dot specifications, it right defines uh, structural cracks as cracks that are deeper than a half an inch. And in this case, we found that they were by at least by March 13th, they were 40 times larger than specification. I read 40 times larger. She said, "Now, 40 times larger." She's saying 20 inches, right? 20 inches. And some of the transcripts where some of the witnesses stated that you could actually put part of your hand in it. Yeah. And we have some pictures that were taken on the 13th. So you could put your hands in these cracks. And yet again, so critical that they still say number 11 was functionally okay to slide off number 12. Wait till you see the cracks. That rulers measured in three different photos between three and six inches depth on these cracks. So these were not small cracks or any sort of normal cracking these were structural problems that's correct member okay. Hamidi. and so you have on march 13th fig gets uh, uh, uh and even before that there's evidence of cracking go actually going back to february 13th but there are some photos that they receive on march 13th and uh there were calls to uh, Florida Department of Transportation stating uh, that there wasn't a safety concern. There were calls to MCM and uh, Bolton Perez saying there was no safety concern. Mm -hmm. uh, yet on the 13th, a, a PowerPoint presentation is developed. A meeting is set for Thursday morning at 9 a.m. A PowerPoint presentation is developed with calculations on uh, how FIG intends to address the cracking. And there's some immediate um, proposal for addressing the cracking, which was the shim under the diaphragm. At that same time, they... So I think the shim under the diaphragm, under the base. So let me see if I can get you... The, so here's the... Here's a pier. I'm going to exaggerate a little bit bigger. And here's part of that structure, the base of the bridge. So let me put the bridge out here. All right. So this diaphragm. All right. So here is where they wanted to shim it. And they did add shims. 
and the shims in theory would stop well they shim right you can't close the gap now they can stop a rotation that's the only <laughs> only and um, 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 <laughs> yeah it would it would it would stop it from rotating because now it can't move any further to to close a distance a gap that this shim uh, closes so this is the shim intent and then go back to post tension call uh the structural technologies firm and ask that the restressing crew be available on uh thursday morning so there's a 48 hour time frame when they have powerpoint this powerpoint presentation and a number of calculations that so remember when they detentioned it they detentioned it on saturday I think that's when the guy sent the text messages, the worker saying, this crack like hell. So that was Saturday. And then Sunday, Monday, two, she said 48 hours ahead of time, they, they contacted um, the VSL, I believe, to get out there and post-tension it. So Thursday's failure day. So 48 hours, that would be Wednesday or when, Tuesday late. Um, that she, I don't know what she means by 48 hours, you know, what she considers 48 hours a day or not. So... Um, so that means by Tuesday, he made the phone call, or, or Tuesday he made the phone call and stated, hey, post tension that, that thing back to where it was on, on you know. Where Could it have been given and should have been given to who at that point for review? Well, you're, you are correct, Member Hamadi, that part. the issue regarding the shim plates uh, on March 13th was recommended by FIG as part of the uh, Bolton Perez crack report number three. And also later that day, it was recommended that restressing of diagonal member 11 occur. Okay, and the intent... The restress from diagonal number 11, that's what I'm talking about. That locks the structure back together because it's no longer locked together. But the problem is 11's cracked the hell. It's, it's nothing anymore. What do you, what do you, it's like having a broken leg and I put, tell you to walk on it. It's nothing. Was, uh, per the transcript, was to go, and I'm quoting, go back one step back, go back one step backwards, perfect, to a previous state. Did, did anyone ever determine? Listen, it was Saturday. I told you guys, um, that's not defamation or anything else. It, it exists. The document exists, even though they don't have any report, this report. They had a preliminary report. It clearly stated, the NTSB had a preliminary report that clearly stated, I'm sorry, they had access to a preliminary report that clearly states that FIG said, put it back to the way it was on Saturday. What the previous state is. Uh, and can you go back to a previous state once cracking occurs? Uh, very good question. Um, it's our determination that um, the, the main, the main uh, span uh, was inelastically damaged. Uh, it was damaged through an irreversible act. Inelastic means it's not elastic anymore. Elastic, you know, it's just, once you deform it, it won't go back. That's what he means by that. Action, which was cracking, you cannot bring a structure back to its pre-existing condition. In that. So understand, he just stated it can't go back to its pre-existing -con pre condition. It can't do it. But yet, in their own report, and they're going to now state that it's 11 slid off, uh, pushed 12 off. But you just told me it w cannot do that because it's a new position. And their report doesn't show, this, this, this NTSB's report doesn't, shows failure with a good number 11 doing the work. But yet, he just now said it's inelastic. It's, it can't go back to where it was. So when they report, they show the failure in their mathematics. They the mathematics are failure. They're, they cannot exist. Because you're evaluating a structure that, as he states, is inelastic at this point. So they, when they do their evaluation, they say, oh, it's, they evaluate it in the fixed, repaired, no problem position. It didn't fail from a no problem position. It failed from the inelastic position, as he stated. The position where it's already at fail, failure. That state. Number 11. And so a restressing was proposed, and we've determined that a restressing is a change to the design plans. Did Fig Bridge engineers recognize that? No, they did not. No. It wasn't any and step. did anyone else recognize that that was a change to the design plan, which would have triggered a peer review? At the March 15th meeting, um, it was uh, 
pointed out by uh, Bolton Perez to FIG, uh, is a peer review going to be done on uh, restressing okay, number 11? Um, the, trans the minutes indicate that FIG concurred, but that was not done. And, um, and I'll come back to this in a minute, but I'll just end this, this round for me by just pointing out that this process actually for if there's either no change to the design plan or a change to the design plan is actually laid out in the request for proposals that FIU issued. Uh, which is on page 26, FIU section W, is an which is there's a process that Building either inspection. that the firm develops, FIG develops a uh, solution if there's a construction problem, and then that solution has to either go to Bolton Perez or FIU for review for 10 calendar days, which obviously didn't happen. For FIU to FIU, FIU was at the meeting. FIU is the one that's now got enough balls to come forward and talk about they can evaluate this uh, CTS structure we're talking about. Isn't that something amazing? But they can't even put a video, one video out about this structure. And so I'll come back, actually, uh, to uh, the uh, more questions on this final meeting in the next round. Thank you. I want you. you to hear the beginning of this guy. Thank you, Member Comedy. I want you to hear how he blames everybody, which is true. I've been on this board for 13 years, and I don't think I've ever seen a case, and I guess I've deliberated, uh, sat here and deliberated uh, close to 200 uh, accidents. I don't think I've ever seen one where there's more finger pointing between the parties. And you know, the finger pointing is actually correct. Everybody is pointing at everyone else. In fact, that is correct, because everyone shares uh, a piece of this accident. Um, there were errors up and down the line committed by several different organizations and even individuals. Mr. Walsh, uh, I was speaking to you the other day and you said something about you heard people saying something like the bridge was talking to them. What, what were you referring to there? What were they referring to? What was that quote? Mr. Chairman, the bridge was talking uh, to them um, at the specifically at the 1112 nodal region. Uh, it was expressing alarming warning signs. So he's stating 1112 was expressing alarming warning signs, the fractures, right? And yet again, they do their calculations with number 11 as a working functional number 11, which means. If, it, if you discount, if you can knock number 11 out, you then have to look at the structure as what's left. And again, that transfers down number 10. 10 then tries to go through the deck into the diaphragm action. This guy is not capable of understanding that in, his, in this evaluation that he did. In the days before the collapse. Yeah, the bridge was talking to them. But it wasn't just talking, it was screaming that there was something deathly wrong okay. with this bridge. A little bit of Yet, Sorry, I'm no one was listening. The cracking was 40 times greater, as we've heard, 40 times greater than the acceptable um, yeah. than acceptable limits yeah, for cracks. Yeah, but I want, I want to clarify, to Mr. Like Walsh, yeah. you said the, the, the F Florida limits are half an inch deep. But are cracks usually not judged by their criticality based on the width? Is that what we're talking about? The, the limits are 0 0.016 inches in width. Is that correct or is that's, that in depth? That's correct, Mr. Mm -hmm. Chairman. The F dot specification does mention the structural cracks that are deeper uh, than a half, half an inch. However, um, the American Con Con Concrete Institute uh, recommends that... Uh, a generally acceptable cracking is 0.016 inches wide, which you just uh, just mentioned, and these cracks were 40 times larger than generally acceptable criteria. And when you say that, you're referring to the width, correct? The would you? You guys, the width is is length. All right, so it's it's deceptive what how he's stating it. The crack, it's not. Here's a crack, right? And it's not that the crack is open. 20 inches from here to here it's this this is the length so they're referring it to 
because it's at, they're at a wheelhouse now, referring it to width. It's length, but the width is different, and then the depth is another one. So width is the width of the crack, the length of the crack, and the depth of the crack. So he, they have it wrong with their, with this engineer, I mean, he's head of the dog, right? But the other engineer did not get this correct. It, this is length. It had no, as I could find, no 40 inch wide, 20 inch wide cracks, 20 inch width cracks. Length, they had 20 inches easy. Uh, depth wise, they were down six plus inches, right? And uh, width wise, they might be, um, it's variable, but that width, I would say, might have been one to two inches in different locations. Would you agree that the crack widths, being what they were, indicated severe yielding of the reinforcing steel and potentially even uh, indicated a complete structure of the reinforcing steel? Absolutely. So, he's, so he just stated, absolutely. So he's going to debunk himself. Absolutely. The structure, when we, when we look at it, it's totally screwed. Number 11, specifically number 11, 12, totally not working. And then they're going to come back to number 11 now has the balls to push 12 off. Is it true that the cracks resulted from structural loading and were unlike typical cracks that we would expect from shrinkage or just normal cracking, if you will, in concrete? That's correct. Okay, so, so stru from structural loading, no. It, the, the cracks are from detensioning, and then the loading came from the flexion of the deck, and then they try to get the, and when they put, okay, let's do this for you. So there is the number, and I'm going to show it to you here. Here's the number 11. All right, this is number 10. So this is 10. This is 11. Don't worry about 12. 12, I'm going to count as zero because I can remove it. This is number 11. So number 11, I can't quite just remove it. You know, there's some dead load on it and things like that, but it's not part of this truss system that will work once you lock it in. You can, you can nix number 11 and the deck will stay firm. So, I mean, next number 12, and the deck will stay firm. Number 11 you need, though. Otherwise, you're going to distribute the load down the bottom here and over to the diaphragm. So when they detensioned number 11, number 11 was detensioned on that Saturday, they lost the ability for this to lock, to lock in. This would then goes in tension because this part of the deck deflects. This part of the deck starts deflecting. And we may not be able to observe it because they didn't use a survey and we don't know. But let's give it a little bit of deflection. And then this separates. This starts for, as a detention. It no longer, no more clamp force in it. There's no more clamp force. So it starts separating. It starts pulling apart. And then that's when they freak out. They call in, you know, whatever. And the problem is this, this has two bars in it. One, that's the lower bar. And then let's call that the upper bar. The other one here is the upper bar. The upper bar goes into the diaphragm. This lower bar goes into the is captured in the deck. When they detension it, it goes through number twelve also. This no, this lower bar, this upper bar right here. And when they detension it, and this does its rotation, it it, sh it causes twelve to get fractures in it. We can see the back of twelve, and I've got tons of videos on that fracturing it. Let's get back to. I'm going to get. I'm going to get back to the video. And would you agree that cracking of this scale of this t in this type of structure is a clear indication that the intended load resisting mechanism were failing? That's correct. So in spite of that, do you remember how many times the FIG engineer of record stated that this was not a safety concern? Do you remember? He said this on multiple occasions. Uh, he All right, look, so that shows that he didn't understand the behavior of his own structure. Now let me go to my model. So now, at the model, as I told you, this is the number 11. Once they detension that, this deck deflects. Deflecting, this, this, this is still post-tension. This number 10 is still post-tension. It's got, it's locked in. So when it deflects, it pulls down on, on this section here, the top part of the canopy. It pull, all of it down here pulls down. It stoops down to some degree where it causes the fracture in this. 
right down this lower section here. Fractures all the pieces, right? It's, just, it's like terrible. So here is my images I have in an album. And these, this is an old image, so I didn't write a red arrow or this stuff on it. This was written a long time ago on this drawing. So now I can write on it again. But this is the one that they state 40 times. 40 times half inch, 20 inches, right? Does this look like 20 inches to you? Come on. This thing is, this is in the feet. This is in the feet, not 20 inches. So they downplayed to the public that is 40x times one half inch, right? Times, uh, I'll double down on that. Um, it's 40x. This is just ridiculous. It's ridiculous. This is this is in the feet. These this the crack you're looking at is also forward and backwards, meaning a rotation is taking place. This is uh, foreground and this is I'm sorry foreground and this is background, and then we have an elevation. So therefore, this 11 has rotated. It's taking a torque, a rotation, and they don't talk about that. This engineer they have for NTSB, both of them. We're incapable of looking at these images and, and looking at and understanding what they were seeing. Asshats. Okay, so what do I have in my comments here? Was destroying cannot push off. Okay, so this is what they post tensioned. This crushed up, split up column number 11 is what they state in their report NTSB is able to push off this number 12, which is right here, including this base part of it. But it's able to push it off. Look at this thing. Look at it. This is before the collapse, uh, a couple of days before. What can this push off? Look at the rest of it. What the hell is this capable of pushing off if you go to drive on it? It's already fractured and showing it can't even hold its own self together. This is once they detensioned it. And I believe once they detensioned it, I'll show a torque in other videos how that um, took place. Like it or not, it's how it took place. I'll go over one. Okay. This is them measuring it. This is a 12 inch ruler, it looks like. And so there's 12, there's 24, there's 36, three feet. They said 40 times half inch, 20 inches. 20 inches, 36 inches. It's a huge difference in that. All right, it's a huge difference in that. Plus, it goes down to the base and up to here. So we've got uh, maybe 40 inches. So I don't know what this crap is about 20 inches. I mean, that actually looks like a 16 inch ruler to me. That doesn't look like a 12 or that looks like 16, but uh, you know, a different type of ruler. But let's just call it 12. All right, I said huge twist in my content in this thing, a huge twist uh, taking place. How is this sliding? I see, I'm reading this one. Um, uh, I see open cracks, right? How is this sliding? See, this, see the cracks here and this crack here? How the hell is this gonna now sliding? They're saying it's sliding. These cracks are open. If it's sliding, these will be compressive, and you would see that you would see the the, the uh, that not open cracks. You'd see this direction, right? It would be sliding, as they state. You would see it failing there. You would see sliding down at the base here. Nope. These cracks you hear are here from rotation of this thing. The canopy rotating over, which this this side is twisting of this number 11 twisted it twist so let's say this is towards us and away from us so it twisted away from us a rotation away from us and that's where you get these two elevations if you will uh, towards us is an elevation and away from us is the other elevation that is that would also get you this opening crack here this rotation because now it's going to rotate twist turning it would also get you off of this deck a bit after the detention taking the post tensioning off Putting it back, post-tensioning this is just asking, for, you know, it's a broken leg and you're post-tensioning it. This is done. This will be structurally, as he stated, inelastic. It, it can't go back. Did you review the structure in terms of the different sequences of construction in particular? Okay. Um, after removal of the false works, see, this has happened. This happened as, I, as this is part of the documents I found. At the removal of the false works or within the expected reflection, reading MCM's photos, he will need a better description of location, blah, blah, blah. These cracks show, and he's all the engineers that were involved in it, including Denny Pate, the, uh, and they blew that shit off. The uh, 
fractures. This is the fracture here, right here. That looks small. This is, I think, before they detensioned. Because when they detension this, you're going to be able to put a ruler down this, 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 this crack. You're going to then be able to put a ruler down it, a wooden ruler, a mason's ruler. Cracks you put after shoring removal. Okay, just shows you the thing was deflecting. Cracks the flooring after the shoring removal means it can't hold its own, it can't stay in position. The shoring held it in one position. They remove the shoring, and that shows that now, uh oh, they did not, this thing is not stable. It's not rigid as it's supposed to be a compressive, all compressive. There shouldn't be any cracks. You should be able to move it away and status quo. Uh, and again, move it false works. You can look at this freezer screen and look at it. That's our super confidence. There's that fracture I talked about. That's the right to 10. Um, that's that nodal layer. That's a model. Okay, I'm going to go away from that. Okay, this is where I said that fine crack was right here. As you can see, it's no longer fine. Sorry about the lighting. You can see that's four inches on this side. It's four inches. Look at the back side, how it's up there. So we have about a, a half an inch to three quarters of an inch um, elevation change. This is the diaphragm area. This is raised up. This tells me that, and this is still connected here with this number 12. This means the, the canopy is rotated. All right, there's a torque action, a rotation took place, and that's how you're able to get the elevation change. All right, they can't read this. That's that dumbass uh, engineer from uh, both of them times two at NTSB. They can't read that elevation change equals a rotation. You just don't get a crack and a magical elevation change. It's about a half inch to three quarter when you go further down and in. Uh, further down here, I believe. And you can see how much you can see the walls of here. Such a huge gap. So here's tight here, larger gap here. So tight here, larger here. All right, this the distance. So this is that rotation, and this is our rotating point back here. And so this side is a rotation, open more open here. All right, and that torque action came from the canopy. This was detension at the time, and this is when they were going back to post tensioning. Oh, for, for clarity, you can see it's labeled right here. That says that's the number 12, and that's the deck, as you guys would, might know as diaphragm also. There we go. Here's the crack, and as you can see, this is a wooden tape measure, and this is 9, 8, and right about here is 7, and then this duction behind internal to, count to number 11. This is number 11 right here. All right. This is number 11 right here. All right, don't worry about it. this. Is just called a chamfer, nothing big. It's, it's it's critical, but it's not critical for us now. And you can see the crack goes all the way down and all the way up. This is the member that they said slid off the uh, this number 12. This fractured up, broken up leg with this open fracture here. Open tells you that. That's indicating of the deflection to number 10 falling down, the rotation of the number 12. This is open, not compressive, not pushing number 12, which is over here. You see it says member number 12 right here? I'm going to get rid of that now. This indicates, as I showed you, that deflection taking place. Now let's go to my model. So at my model, this is number 11. I removed 12. Remember I told you it's not really needed to prove my point. But when they detention number 11 here, this fractures all up. This fractures. And all that fractures there. But this time I'm leaving it in place. Not fractured. And now you're going to see me step on this. I'm going to stand on it. And what will happen? Will it deflect here? Will it deflect here? Well, because everything is locked in place, equivalent to being post-tensioned. It's going to act like a re it, it really works. The system really works. It really works. So, it works. It took my load. It didn't deflect. But if I cut this number 11, if I cut this number 11, and I step on this structure, I get deflection here. And that's why I try to recapture with what if you could do a theoretical repair. I had this brace system here trying to recapture it. And uh, I cut it now. It's, it's cut. This is, this is cut, right?
Trust me or don't trust me. I don't give a shit. So listen. Um, so this is when it, when this is when this is broken, fractured all the hell. The loads try to make it over, but they can't go down 11 anymore, and they don't have to go down 11 anymore because 11, the deck is deflecting, and this is where you get those open cracks right here on the bottom 11. If they were compressive crack cracks, we would say it was still going down number 11. And if they were compressive crack fr fractures, and it was sliding off number 12 here, why did he have to put post tension on it? Why did he put post tension on this inside number 11? That day of, if it was already telling me it was already pushing on number 12, why would you want to put more compression forces into it? Oh, we lost you. Hold on. So again, why would he put compression in number 11 if it was already pushing on 12, right? If it was already pushing on 12, you don't need to add more compression. If it's already in compressive mode, because they said it slid off number 12. If that was the case, why were there open cracks here? It was not. The photographs indicate it was no pushing of number 12 by number 11. That it was not from that. It, it didn't slide. It didn't push this one off. Not until the deflection went down. The snow area is still in place. Once deformation deform is deforming, then it can participate whatever's left. And it rotates down also away from. But that is a short version of that. And this is 40 minutes long or so. This is the short version. This is the larger model of that. Um... And that's the end of that. All right, I'm tired. Hope you guys can appreciate this content. And you, oh, you saw that I had number one off. It's not there. And you saw the deck worked. That one, it made it this far into the deck. It was able to get to the diaphragm. It makes it this far. It gets into the diaphragm. Take note of the distance of the diaphragm distance between the last point here and the diaphragm. This diaphragm is this. It's much greater on this side than that side. But, once number 11 is not working, once number 11 is showed fractured and open fractures, that puts the next point, low point here, to here. That's a greater distance than to your left, than from here to here. See the distance? So you wonder why it, would, why it didn't fail down that end or somewhere else. Well, all this was still rigid. This is the one they, 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 re, they, let, they detention from. And... Hopefully, uh, Embry and all, you can appreciate this. Thank you. Bye.